All right, I'd like to start this recording with Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, not to be corny, but for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. Now, I'm not going to boast. I've had a few people ask me to do this video, and I've thought about it. Uh, I do know that Paul gave his own personal testimony a few times in the book of Acts and in his writings. So I figure maybe it's time for you out there to know who I am. And you ought to know who I am and where I come from and where I stand. I hope I can get this done in one video, but may God bless the time that we have. I like to start off, first of all, I was born September 6, 1968. I was two months early as a preemie. I spent the first part of my life in an incubator in a hospital. How long, I do not know. But probably in that day and age, a baby that was born two months early in an incubator maybe was not expected to live long. And there are few, if not many times in my life through the, through the stories of my parents and my own personal testimony where I believe as God has called me to be a preacher and a teacher, I believe in my heart that Satan has tried to kill me, tried to get rid of me. And like the book of Job chapter 2 says, that God says, listen, you can touch him, but you can't take him. There have been times that, where I would have been gone to heaven because of no knowledge of sin, and I believe this would have first started when I was born. There have been other times in my life that I had probably died and gone to hell. And there are other times that I really don't know. I was born in a city, and it's not a metropolitan city, it's a city, not, not no big city, called New London, Connecticut. New London, Connecticut is an old whaling port. It has a lot of history. It's on the River Thames, the Thames River. On the other side of New London, you had Groton, Connecticut, where there's a naval sub base, electric boat, that builds submarines, Pfizer's, pharmaceuticals. New London and Groton has a vast history, has a vast entertainment, has a great for a young man to grow up in sin. My mother was a hard worker. She supported our home even though my father brought home the paychecks. My mother had to really overdo my father. My father was not really a father to me growing up and I have no disrespect to him. I love my father dearly. And he'll be part of the, the testimony later. But my mom had to work, get extra work. Uh, she was a kind of mother that, God bless her soul, that she saved today was, you know, give Styley everything he wanted or wants. Give him all the toys, fill his room up, and he'll be content. And not troublesome. Listen, I remember all the Christmases I, I grew up with. When, when I woke up Christmas morning, that around that tree, I'm not talking about the tree was filled with presents. I'm talking about the entire room had presents. If you were to see the pictures of all the gifts I've got. I love my mother dearly and she, she saved. But I grew up in a house where there's no religion. My dad, nothing. My mom, you, you'll learn a little bit with my grandparents in a few minutes. But there was no religion. There was no hymns. There was no Bible in a home that I grew up in. Uh, I remember a time that my father told me, I don't know how old I was, but I had uh, a temperature that was over 100 as an infant. It had been a, a, a blizzard-like conditions. And I... My father calling with, with no 911 there, but calling the ambulance or the fire department was told because of the weather, we can't make it to your house. 
Now, my father had to drive a long way around, and the hospital was only a few blocks away from our house. My father had to drive all the way around the long way. And part of my father's account is that when he finally got me into the hospital, they took this little baby, and they thrust me into a bucket of ice. My temperature was so high that the doctor telling my dad that had you not brought that child here, he would never have made it through the night. And when I remember, I read, through, which is now gone, my baby book, as the Hong Kong flu and various areas like that, I believe Satan tried to kill me to prevent me from doing what I do today. Preach, preaching, preaching on the streets, preaching all these videos. Now, I believe that God has a church there sometime in my future if the Lord tarries. Um, I grew up in a home with no religion. My grandfather. I'm going to go through this very quick of my, fan, of my life, and then I'll fill in the gaps later maybe. I don't know. We're just going to let the Lord bless and do. My grandfather was a die-hard Roman Catholic in a Roman Catholic church, and I'm not going to give no names to protect the identity. Uh, but I got to say one thing about my grandfather as a Roman Catholic. I said he was a die-hard Roman Catholic, but he wasn't a die-hard Roman Catholic. My grandfather inspired me in the fact that what he did, not many Catholics do. I'm going to tell you what, what I remember when I, I went over to my grandparents' house weekly. Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, I spent the nights at my grandparents' house every week. I remember my grandfather is Henry Pucas. I'll give his name. He was an old World War II vet of the CBs. Him and his brother started a business, a construction business, where, uh, fixing houses, painting, roofs, and all that. And I'll tell you about my grandpa, Henry, and my uncle Joe. They never needed to advertise. Their work was so good that, listen, people would tell other people about them, and they would be called. They didn't need a yellow page ad. They didn't need ads. But as far as salvation, again, as I read, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that, not of yourselves, it is a gift to God. Not of works, least any man shall boast. My grandpa died several years ago and saved in heaven. I'm not sure about my Uncle Joe. I witnessed to him and got him very angry. But he wasn't a die-hard Catholic, but he was a die-hard Catholic. Now let me explain myself. As I said, as remember my grandfather, who set the example for me today, is... He'd be in his, his room, and he'd be watching, we, we would watch ice hockey. And he, we'd be watching ice hockey, and he'd be having a radio plug in his ear, listening to a ball game. He'd be listen, watching a ball game on the TV and listening to another ball game on the radio. And as I would get down, settle down in my bed, which was the next room, I could hear and see my grandpa. Everything would have been turned off. And my grandpa would sit down a half hour, 45 minutes, and read his Bible. And this is vivid, right? We are still to this day. Without the, I hear the Bible close. I hear the chair creak. I hear the floor make it sound. As my grandpa would get on his knees, and he'd pray. Not once a week, not once a month, every single night. And then he turn off the lights and go to bed. I mean, he was true to the Catholic religion, but he wasn't true by the Bible. And when it came time for him to be saved, as the preacher met with him that afternoon, I'm told I wasn't there. That the preacher took his Bible and handed it to my grandfather and said, Listen, can you show me where the Roman Catholic Church is in that Bible? And that the stuff that the Roman Catholic Church does, can you follow it in that Bible? And from the Bible itself, from the Word of God that my grandfather always read, even as a Catholic, 
my grandfather turned to the Lord Jesus Christ as his sin. Now, we believe he was always saved. Listen, a Catholic can be saved. And going to the wrong church would be a sin. We believe our, my grandfather was saved all along. He just finally just got into the Bible and got right and served God. Now, whether he got saved that day or was saved before, that's between him and God. But that's the only religion I had, was my grandfather bringing me to the Roman Catholic Church. And when he brought me there, we, it was Saturday nights. And you want to talk about something that was just dead and tiresome, I would lay on the pews and fall asleep sometimes. I would put my hand in the back and pew and see how long it took my hand to get pins and needles, you know, from the blood not flowing and all that. It, it was just junk to me. It was garbage to me. And I thank God that, that, that Satan never put that into my heart. I, my grandfather was never one to go to confessional. I'd never done that. But we would do the holy war, you know, fee fi fo fum and uh, we would take part. Um, or he would take part in the Mass. There was only certain times I could. He would allow me to do it. And only on Easter and Christmas would my mom maybe come, my Aunt Debbie, and my grandmother. And it's sorry, the fact is, i got to say this about my grandma, maybe I shouldn't, but my grandma grew up in a Baptist church. I found out later. Right across the street from where we went as a Catholic. But my grandma married a Catholic, and being her husband, she, somewhere along the line, she broke from both churches, either or. I don't know the story of that. But when my time came away, I mean, there was there was times when, when Grandpa got ready to, to go to church, I'd get into bed, and I'd pretend I was sleeping, and pretend to be a hard to be woken. And within a few times, he'd give up, get angry, and then he'd go, you know, time not to be late to church. And when the time came along that I could break away, I broke away from the Roman Catholic Church. I didn't break away from, listen, I loved God. I didn't know who God was, and the Catholic Church did not show me. There were many times in my life between breaking away from that Catholic Church and to I got saved, I would run to a Catholic church, I think I, I can count them on my hand, five times, if, if less. When there was trouble in my life, I would run to the, the church would have been open, the one right around the corner where I lived, I would go I would go up to the altar, and it wasn't the Catholic religion, it wasn't the Catholic church, but, you know, you, as an unsaved person, you reference God in church, so you run to an altar. And there were several times in my life, even as stupid as prayers there were, and one of them was a sinful prayer, I believe, or a sinful act that was in my life. I would go to that altar, like I said, no, no more than five times I ran to that church. And I'd pray to God. There was a time in my life, I, I, was, I was a young man, I got involved with an older woman. Complete distress to my mom and to my grandmother. And then... The church is right around the corner. Here I am living in sin. We both would go to church services. I think we went a couple times. If not, I can count them on my hand. Again, it wasn't the Catholic Church. It was an act to God. Even though I was unsaved, lost, I've always had a prayer in my life from a little boy. I wanted to be married and I wanted to have kids. That was it. I never read my Bible. I never had a Bible. The first Bible I ever had that I can recall would be after I got saved. And hopefully I'll get into that story how I stole the Bible. Uh, I grew up again in the city of New London. I grew up biking and walking. There was a river there, there was a, a large beach, which was called Ocean Beach, but that wasn't the ocean. It was Long Island Sound. And there was fishing, there was swimming, there was, there was a particular sin in my life that I don't want to talk about. 
It's under the blood. But that sin followed me all through growing up. And that sin was active in my life. It wasn't just something I thought about. It was something I took part in. So I'm, not, I'm very sorry. I did. And Satan has used that sin. And it was just troublesome. And I think to realize as a young boy how much that I knew. And I didn't even know where I, where I learned this stuff from. Uh, there would be times as I grew up, I would talk with homeless people. And to realize much later on, when we were serving in Norwich on the street ministry, there would be people, as, as a saved man, I would finally talk to, to homeless people. There was times as a young man, I'd growing up, going fishing and all that, there would be a, a, a grinder place on, on Bank Street, and I'd be given money to go get a grinder and a solder for my day to go, you know, fishing and all that. I would be talking, Bank Street was known as Prostitution Alley. And as a young man, I would associate myself with these women. I never got involved with them, but I would talk with them. I would, I would walk with them as I'm going down to the fishing spot. And to realize that today, how, how wicked this world is, you couldn't even do that today without getting involved in a sin. That even though it's prostitution, they were... I don't know how you can say it, but they were respectful to children, unlike the sinners today. So I was I was around the wrong crowds growing up, and whoever else I was I was hanging out with, I never I would never know who they are today. I've got one more one more thing to say as far as Satan intervening in my life that Satan almost stole me, and I had a little saliva in my mouth. Let me say that again. Satan tried to steal me. He almost did. I remember, I don't know what age it was, it had to been first before first grade, because that's when I left the school. I was at Namiok School in New London. And how it happened was I left school and this guy met me. And he walked me home. And he asked to see my mom when we got home. Well, all I remember was my mom went through more yards than Joe Montana. Can I say one thing about my mom? I love her. Is she corrected me. She used a wooden yardstick. I remember after that episode, she took me down and she beat me. I was my little behind. See, I had talked to a stranger. And now they're, they're guardian angels of children. I believe you can find it in the scriptures that God protected me from Satan. As I've said before, Satan tried to kill me. I think Satan tried to steal me that day. I thank God for a mother that corrected me. Because I would not be where I am today. My mom putting through my hiney a conscience. My mom using that yardstick never seared my conscience. So as I said, well, I love God. I didn't know who he was. I remember again my little friend Kevin living in New London. We would sacrifice worms to God. I, I remember it vividly. But I also had the devil in me as a young man. I remember Kevin and I, we took a whole bunch of uh, stones and filled this tree that was hollow of rocks so this witch wouldn't get out in the middle of the night. I mean, listen, I was your typical child. I was not a sinless child for my mother. If my mom has any gray hair on her head, it is because of me. But that's all right now because it's all under the blood for both of us. So as I said, I have gone to an altar at a Catholic church between leaving the Catholic church and the time I got saved. I ran to God and I would pray prayers when I got in trouble I guess is that what got me saved I don't know if God really hears prayers I'm saved as I said my grandmother grew up in a Baptist church she claimed to be saved from it left it I guess 
But my life was a mess. My grandmother came to me one day. I'm trying to think. I think I was living on my own. I wasn't. I'm not sure if I was living with my dad. My grandma came to me today. She said, "We found this church." I said, "Good. You found the church. We want you to come." And constantly, constantly, she wanted me to go to this church. I said, "No. Church is born. Church is dead. I finally got away from it. I ain't going back." Grandma, shut up. I'm going to say something now before I get to April 1987. I have never received a gospel track in my life. The first gospel track I seen was after I got saved and they were the chick tracks. Now th this is where I'm coming from now. Listen to me. I heard a guy the other day say tracks are, are wrong. They don't work. Listen, I thought the chick comic book tracks were excellent. I thought they were Christian trading books. I was actually, after I got saved, I was actually building a collection trying to get all of them in the whole set. I didn't know you could buy them from Chick Track. I didn't, I th didn't know what. I thought they were for Christians to read and Christians to know. That's the first Bible I had was the Chick Tracks. So if you don't think tracks work, it worked for a young man who got saved. That was his only Bible in the beginning. Until some guy came up to me, thank God for him, I don't remember his name. What are you doing with those? I'm collecting them. He says, you're supposed to give them out. No, I'm going to get the whole collection. Only if I get doubles while I hand them out and trade them. He says, no, that's not the point. And from that talk with that young Christian I learned how to pass out gospel tracts. Thank you, Lord, for, for that young man. Bless him today. And thank you for showing me. That was after I was saved. I, I'm trying to show you another thing. When I was between being born and April 1987, I never had a church come to me. And there were a few churches around where we lived. There was a Catholic church, like I said, a couple corners. There were a few Baptist churches. And when I, lived, when I was at my grandma's house, there was this big, old, historical church. Never came to my door. Years later, I found out that my wife Tracy had visited that church much later on. But I knew there was a church there. I just didn't know nothing about it. I knew there were churches. I knew there was religions. But no one ever came to this, to this young man. My grandmother had to. I never had a witness. I never had Sunday school. I never had anybody take me off to a side except for trying maybe to steal me. I never had anybody who professed to be a Christian to take this young man to realize up to April 1987, Satan tried to kill me. I would have died and gone to hell in my sins. Instead of rather having them washed away. All the people I've been with, all the kids in school I grew up with, no one, not even the ones that were saved, ever told me about Jesus. You better bet your horses behind, my friend. I'm going to get tracks out. I'm going to preach on the street. I'm going to tell people about Jesus because there's little stylies out there running around who no one else cares about. No one else is going to get a hold of. And if they do, they're going to give them cookies and treats and playtime for church service. All the places I have, were at. Listen, I'm going to tell you one thing right now. When I first got my first job, when I was a bike assembler and a stock boy, I was 16 years old. I can testify to this fact. Do you know what I was doing when I was 16 years old? You ever see the, por por the pornography books out there? I was writing stories about that junk and was getting them published in those books. A 16-year-old man, young man. I learned about that stuff, but I never learned about Jesus. No, well, I guess I gave away my sin. It's all under the blood.
since I gave it away, I might as well say that when I was seven years old, paying a dollar to explore a woman's body. I'm not happy with the life I live. I would have been just as unhappy in terror if I would have died and gone to hell. Christian, I'm a testimony that you ought to go out there, like the Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. But I wasn't going to go back to church. I want to thank God that my grandma's a nag, and I, I mean that honestly, I mean that truthfully, and I mean that sincerely. She would not let up. So finally I went. Now listen, when you come from a dead church like the Roman Catholic Church, and, the, and, and you walk into a Baptist church, and you get a guy up there, I mean, he's salivating, and if you sit in the front row, you need a shower. You, I stand in awe, like, wow, what was that? That guy did as did much as uh, my mom being mad at me. Just didn't use four-letter four, four letter words. It was a clean yelling at me. And I remember my aunt and uncle took me, well, actually, we went to Mesquamica Beach, I believe it was. And then they took me home. I remember the next time I saw my grandma, I said, you know what? I said, you tell anybody about me again. And you lost me as a grandson. And I'm trying to say was, I thought she told that preacher all about me. So when I showed up in the church, he would change the message and direct them at me. Sound familiar? I don't know why I went the first time besides my grandma's nagging, but I know why I went back, and I don't know how long it was. I believe this all happened during the month of April, 1987. I went back. I know one of the times my my aunt and uncle took me to the drag races because they knew I liked stuff like that. May have been the next. That may have been the next reason why I went back. And I got something in my life that I never had before. It's called conviction. I was burning mad. But I was the kind of child when, when mom did said something, when the teacher said something, when the cop told you something, when somebody told you something, which you, you asked my family, you asked my wife, when I'm told to do something, I'm going to do it. Now the law says that I'm right now to go seek out Obamacare. I don't like it, but guess what I'm doing? I'm seeking Obamacare. So I started getting under conviction. And I started to realize, you know what? For the first time in my life, I realized it was, I didn't know I was a sinner. I realized something is wrong with me. And I didn't go run to a shrink. I didn't go run to a doctor to get a prescription to wipe it off my conscience. I went back to my grandmother and told her, I said, you know what? I I feel, feel I need to do something. I don't know what. So she went back to the church and got a hold of the church. And, she, and April 21st, she said, well, it was before April 1st. On April 21st, she says, come over to my house. A couple of men are going to meet you from church. I said, okay. I don't have to work. At that point, I was, I was uh, my, uh, my, my mind is so gone, I don't remember where I was working during that time. So, April 21st, I met with Joe Caswell. Now, there was another man I remember, Joe Whitmore, but he said he wasn't there, but I believe it was him, but I, out, of the mouth, out, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall be established. I remember Joe Caswell. I pray for him often. Though with my preaching the way I am in the Bible, he has forsaken me. His son in the Lord 
me has forsaken because I take the truth. I've tried to Facebook friend him often, but I finally given up. I mean, he'd he be friends with me, then he dies out. But I remember him taking a Bible. And at 773 Broad Street Extension, the house is through there, in Waterford, Connecticut. What time? I don't know. It was, after, it was afternoon, August 21st, 1987. I knelt down at my grandmother's coffee table with Joe. I don't know what I said. I know I had tears. But I do know I asked Christ to save me. He said, how do you know that? Because I know God came into my life. My grandmother was a nicky picky woman. And everything had to be just right. Everything had to be sodomized. Everything had to be clean. And her main concern was she was upset because we moved her flower arrangement on the coffee table. And we got fingerprints. I just had my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And my grandma was worried about fingerprints and a stupid flower thing. Which I don't even think, I don't even think the coffee table is no more, no more there. Sound familiar with some of you Baptists out there? I have seen people get upset because somebody got saved. You, they've been witnessing to that person and someone else led them to the Lord. I know a Bible verse for that. Paul had water, the Paul was planted, but God gives an increase. It takes at least two people. That day, I, I the seed generated. I don't know who planted it. Again, it wasn't gospel tracts, and it wasn't a church. I never had that. So I went to church the 22nd. And well, they told the pastor that I had received Christ. And the pastor left it open for an invitation to, for me, he knew it was me, and anybody who had, any, had a testimony. Well, I stood up and said, I, I got saved yesterday. And the pastor called me up to the church and said, okay, now you need to be baptized. Okay, now I need to be baptized. I was baptized the following next Sunday. Now, I don't remember if it was that first Saturday or the, or the Saturday, or, I mean Sunday, or it was the Sunday that I told the church I got saved, or it was the Sunday I was baptized. But I remember, a story, I remember going home. This is how you know it takes. I have never had a Bible, my friend. I haven't even gotten involved in chick tracks yet. The only Bible I had left with Joe Whitmore. I got into my Granada, which I can never forget that car. That car, woo! My Ford Granada. I went back to my dad's house. So I had to been living with my dad. My parents were divorced. And I don't know how long it was, but I remember my dad saying, I remember one day to my dad, I brought home a, a six pack of beer and my dad put his arms around me. He says, hey, you know what? It feels good to have a beer with my son. And this is a guy I would steal money from. He had a business. I steal money. I, I would stick welding rods, two of them to go in and steal money so I could support my cigarettes. You know I was a thief. You know I smoked. You know I drank. You know I carried my my own bottle of Bacardi. Every party I went, everywhere I went, was bring my own. It was Bacardi. It was I I had Bacardi in my trunk. You know there was a time before I got saved that I had one day I had I was up in bed sleeping. My father heard, open up the door. There's there's New London police. New London police want, wanted to talk to me. They wanted to confiscate my father's car because I had bought booze illegally. I was underage. 
I had went and got a a a a, a, a teenager, my about my age. I got her drunk. We just threw her on her front lawn. And the cops told me the mother wants to press charges against me. That's who I was. Had Christ not come into my life, that's who I would be today. Even worse. So I went home to my dad and I said, Dad, you're going to hell. I remember my dad looking at me right in the face. My dad never punished me. My dad really had nothing to do. He looked me in the face and said, don't you tell me to go to hell. And he was angry. I've never seen my dad angry. I said, no, dad. I'm not telling you to go to hell. I'm telling you not to go. I hadn't had a Bible. And within the, the first week that I told the church I, I, I received Christ or after I was baptized, God called me to go to my dad and say, Dad, the only thing I could say is don't go to hell. And since that April, or May, uh, yeah, April 1987, I have been praying for my dad to be saved, which has not gotten saved yet. Even before I knew the words, go ye into all the world, even if I couldn't even find Mark in the Bible, I was already a witness as best as I could. So like I said, I got into the tracks. I found the tracks, and I started a story like that. The pastor came up to me and said, we're going to go visitation. And this is where it starts going downhill, and I'm not going to give no names. If I do, it's only by accident. Okay? I may have to stop this and, and, and go part two of after I'm saved. You want to hear you want to hear a life? You get a life after I'm saved. Matter of fact, you know what? I just made to stop it right now and and have part two after Sally got saved. This is pre. Well, let's talk about before I got saved. Some other things maybe I can think of. I grew up in a house. With alcohol, it was, it was smoking. I grew up where I go over to my other grandma's house to show you religion. You know, play canasta. You know, I was sitting at a table at my grandma's house playing canasta, sitting next to a woman that would be my father's future wife while he was still married to my mother. The Bible says to honor thy father and mother. Listen, I remember the day I heard, I, my mom learned about that. And I remember taking my father by the shirt and lifting him up against the wall. Now, I'm not a violent person. Some of you are not going to believe this. I have only been in one fight in my entire life. I'm talking about with a fist or anything like that, hitting or anything. I've only been in one fight. And that was in, in grammar school. I remember and the stupid things I remember, the things I can't remember. I remember me and the boy going off to the, to the nurse's office and all that, and they didn't call the police back then. They, you know, would you get, would you get in a fight over? I don't know. And all right, shake hands, make up, be friends. You were friends before, yeah, we were. Okay, now go back to class. I dishonor my parents. All, all children do that under the breath. I had a few accidents in my life. Now, I'm not going to go in detail with it because of my mom. But my dad is a hoarder. Always been. He worked for the natural gas company, which also was an electric light company. And he would bring stuff home. And for whatever reasons was, I don't want to tell, I had a swimming pool. And I had taken these buckets of water and I put them in the swimming pool. I filled the pool up with, these swimming, with this water. Well, 
Even the doctors don't know what that water was. I'm going to say acid. Well, let's just say everywhere where you sit to be clean, I had burns. And that water was taken by the police and it was taken to a crime lab and investigated. They never could tell what it was. I'm telling you, Satan tried to kill me. Satan tried to get rid of me because he knows what would happen to me today and whatever the Lord knows tomorrow. I have been in jail ministries. I have witnessed to people and they've gotten saved. I have been to people where they changed their lives. I have gone to Christians where they turn away from God. But God has used me as a stoplight. Don't go that way. And they ran the light. And I've been a witness and a testimony against them. Just trying to think of some other things before I got saved. Things that the Lord has saved me out of. I'm not bragging about my life. Because the verse I read to you when we started was, For by grace are you saved... For by grace are ye saved. That's by the grace of God. Through faith. God gave me the faith to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God gave me that faith even when nobody came to me. I go run to an altar. That there was a God. And that not of yourselves. I couldn't do nothing. It is a gift of God. Not of works. See, I'm not telling you my works. I'm telling you what I was saved from. At least any man boasts. I'm not boasting. I remember the, here's another thing real quick. I remember the first religious lie I was told. That at midnight and Christmas morning, the bells would all ring. And there'd be a star in the heavens. And whatever age I was, I set my little alarm clock and I poked out the window and realized, you know what? That church lied to me. Maybe that had part of me not wanting to go to church again. And there's one more thing I want to say is I remember at the Catholic Church, my, my grandfather took me out. You had to go downstairs into the rec room to use the potty. And you would go through this room to get to the pie. I remember it. I don't know why I remember this. It's just they had a cooler, a big cooler for soldiers and stuff like that. And it always struck my interest. Here I am in a church, which I didn't know much about church. Here I am in a Catholic church and on that cooler, and I don't know if you got if you gotta be old to remember this. If you're young, you're listening to this video, you're not gonna know what I am. There used to be a pit, a sticker of the Bud Man. Do you, you, know, you remember the Bud, the Budweiser man? It'd be this little cartoon guy they had. Well, that was right there. That did not belong in the church. And I always mystified by here is the Bud man, Budweiser. My dad and all that drinks Budweiser, plays poker and all that with the guys at the boat yard. Here is this little guy sitting in, the, in a cooler in a church. Ooh, what I learned later on about those Roman Catholic nuns. <laughs> See, God had already put on the heart the truth. I just had not received Christ as my Savior. Now, I'm going to come back. I'm going to tell you what happened after I got saved, part two. I have to dance the bread to the side of the tongue. Well, I have the Tupperware stuff, but I don't have a jar.